Looks like Big Al, Rhode Island Relic Digger, or Grunt Diggers, has decided to challenge Rob Fine's treasure to a Rhode Island versus Texas Penny Box Battle Series. So I've got a package from Big Al, Rhode Island Relic Digger, and he said, Rob, I want to challenge you with three of my Rhode Island penny boxes against three of your Texas boxes. I'm pretty excited about this hunt because I haven't hunted full boxes from the East Coast. So I'm excited to see if we got some oldies and some goodies in his boxes. And I can't wait to get started. Before I do anything further, though, I want to let Big Al Rhode Island Relic Digger know that when I got the box, it was pretty damaged. We had a hole here. A huge hole down here and this top box was destroyed was destroyed all of the penny rolls from that box were all loose in the box so much that it even damaged some of the things you sent me now he did add some stuff for me he says rob i've included a roll of halves that has proofs you might need for your collection and some cool civil war commemoratives and a few gold plated ones as well the roll was destroyed. We do have some of the cool toners that you said you wanted to send me, the gold-plated ones, as well as the proofs, and even the commemoratives as well. I am missing the 82, 90% silver commemorative half dollar. That's the box. That's how it came, brother. I just wanted to show you that the box did come in damaged, so if there's more than this that was supposed to be in there, this is all that I got, although it's more than enough. He's also included some of his cool stickers, Grunt Diggers, We Served, Now We Preserve. What an awesome, awesome sticker, brother. And thank you, of course, for your service to our country. He's included a challenge coin for me. He knows I collect these. I'll definitely add it to my collection. I'm honored to add it to my collection. Thank you, Big Al. In his note, he says there's also a thin half dollar that's toned he wanted me to take a look at. And I don't know which one it is, brother. So just let me know which one it is and I will definitely take a look at it. Hopefully it's not missing. Finally, I want to point out that Big Al says that they have a non-veteran support grunt diggers page for non-veterans who would like to see our finds. Please check them out. And if you are a veteran, please join the veteran one. Thanks again for the opportunity for the challenge and to be part of the videos. Good luck. I can't wait to see if the North wins and thanks for the shout out. His Facebook groups are here, grunt diggers, and Grunt Digger Support Group, which is the non-veteran group. That being said, let me get his three boxes and my three boxes up on the counter to see who wins. All right, everyone, we've got the boxes on the table. Just wanted to point out that I went ahead and marked Rhode Island box one, box two, and box three, and Texas box one, box two, and box three. We're gonna kick it off with this damaged box first. You can see it was all torn up. We actually had a penny roll that was damaged. I taped it together, but the pennies just don't want to stay in there. Either way, we've got 50 rolls in it. I double checked them all. We're good to go. Now I had to open up my boxes as well, just to make sure we had circulated pennies because if they were uncirculated, we couldn't do the hunt. Now that I've got this set up, let me get the top two boxes set up on the table. I'll move the other four off and we'll begin the hunt. For this challenge, I'll use my regular penny box battle series Excel spreadsheet to keep track of the finds. What will happen is in this video, it'll be box one versus box one. We'll determine a winner. Then we'll do box two in another video and box three for a third video. I'm looking forward to this. I hope my boxes are good boxes, but I really actually hope these Rhode Island ones have some sweet finds as well. Let me get them cleared up. Let me get them set up and let me be right back. All right, we've got the boxes ready to be hunted. I've got my scoring sheet set up. The only concern I have is we didn't decide on foreigns and I don't know if Rhode Island gets a lot of Canadian or foreign coins up there. If for some reason we're running into a lot of Canadian cents and we need to make an adjustment to the score, I will. Because technically I don't like to count Canadian coins in my coin roll hunts scoring when I'm going against a Northern state. We'll see how it goes. Just want to give you guys a bird's eye view of what we're doing. Now we're ready to get to hunting. I'm gonna get this box ready to rock and roll. And I'm gonna start off with the damaged roll first because might as well get this one out of the way since it's a mess. All right, we'll bring you in on my first good find. 
We're on roll number one, and that was quick. We've already got our first Canadian cent here. 1976. Roll number five, another Canadian. 1969. Roll number six is gonna yield our first wheat cent of the hunt. Pretty nice shape too. 1958, last year wheat cent. Just wanna double check to see if there's any doubling. That would be ridiculous. There is not, but Rhode Island Relic Digger is on the board. First wheat scent found. Roll number eight, wheat scent number two. A 1942, getting older. So we're 10 rolls in and I wanna give a quick progress update. It's taking a lot longer to hunt the Rhode Island boxes than I anticipated because I check a lot of the varieties from the Philadelphia Mint. So when I look at my 72s, my 83s, my 84s, my 92s, my 95s, 98, 99, 2000, the 94s, which I don't have listed on here as well, plus some other various years, there are a lot of varieties to be found. And coming from Rhode Island, the predominant number of coins in this box have been minted from Philadelphia. So it's taken me a lot longer to hunt every individual roll than my Texas boxes, which predominantly have Denver minted ones. Just wanted to give you that update. It's gonna be a fun hunt. That's why I like hunting these Northeastern state boxes because I have a lot more opportunity to inspect the obverse and reverse of many of the scents. Now that we've said that, we're on the board with two wheat scents. Let's get back to the hunt. Roll number 11, Canadian scent. Number three, 1993. Roll number 12, wheat scent, number three, and it's the oldest, 1941. Roll number 15, and I think we have an old one here. Thought I saw 20 something. 1926, Philadelphia. Man, had it been a 1926S, 4.5 million minted, would have been a semi key date. Still, 1926, 20s wheat scent in the box. Roll 15 in. We'll take that all day. Roll 20, and we have our first Canadian young head, if you will, 1963, and Canadian number four. Roll 21, and I think I see weed scent number five, and it looks like it could be old, and there might be a mint mark. Yeah, I think it's 1918, and I don't think that is a mint mark. Yeah, no mint mark, and... Barely legible, but that's a teens weedy in the box. 1918, they're getting older. Roll 23 and I have a couple of finds. I smashed them down and I saw towards the back we have a wheat scent, but towards the front we have a Canadian. So the Canadian, which is number five, is an 83. And the wheat scent towards the back, which is number six, it's a 51S. I'll take a 51S all day. Six wheat cents, 23 rolls. Same roll, wheat cent number seven. A 1948 Philadelphia in good shape. Roll 25 marks the halfway point of the box and we've got three finds. A Canadian, a Canadian, and a wheat cent. The first Canadian, 1966. The second Canadian, not a young head, 1978. And the wheat scent, which is going to be number eight of the box already, 1956D. Eight wheat scents, seven Canadians in the box. Roll 28, Canadian number eight, 2010. I think I'm gonna stop showing the Canadian scents now at this point, unless it's a young head or older, because there seems to be quite a few in this Northeastern box. Not that I'm complaining, it's just a lot. And I don't wanna show you guys every Canadian. I can show them at the wrap up. Let's get back to the hunt. Roll 30, weed scent number nine. Standard 44P, but it's still another one on the board. Roll 31, weed scent number 10. 56D, same roll, 
We had sent number 11, and that's a 55 Philadelphia. Well, of course, we'll check it for any doubling. It's really heavy class one doubling on this one if you have it, and I don't see it. Still, always fun seeing a 55 in the box and 11 weed cents at 31 rolls in. Roll 33, and I know I said I wouldn't show the Canadians, but take a look at the reverse on this one. This is going to be a young head, and it is in, well, I guess the obverse has got some scratches, but it's still in pretty great shape for being found in circulation. Glad it to the board, though. That's a good find. Roll 34, and we've got a dozen weed cents. 1945. We're on roll 40, and we're going to have Wheat Scent 13, guys. So that's a pretty good box so far. It's another common 44 out of Philly, but it doesn't matter. We're on roll number 43, and we're going to have Wheat Scent number 14 of this box. It's a 45 from Philly, but we'll take it. It's a lot in the 40s, handful in the 50s, and a few oldies so far. Roll 45 is going to have a dandy. It's our 15th wheat scent, and look at this date facing me. 1911, Philadelphia. If it would have been a S, it would have been the sixth lowest minted wheat scent of the Lincoln Scent series. But it's still a 1911, and that is our oldest of the box, 109 years old. Roll 46 is going to have wheat scent number 16. It was facing me. It's a 51D, but that's a lot of Wheaties in this box. Roll 48 and the Wheatie Barrage keeps happening. This is number 17, a 1958 Denver. Well, we finished Big Al Rhode Island Relic Diggers first box from Rhode Island and uh, it was a dandy. It's gonna be tough to beat. 17 Wheat Cents. The finds of the box really are a 1911 Philly, a 1918, pretty slick, and a 1926. Three of them pre-40s, 14 post-40s. We also found 12 Canadians. Three are young heads. I'm probably not going to count points for the Canadians in this series. If we get any non-Canadian foreigns, I'll count those, of course. We got six 1959s. A couple of pretty nice cents here. A 69 Philadelphia and a 72 Philadelphia. That 72 does not have the DDO, of course. And a beat up, albeit it does count, 69S. We found a ton of copper in there as well. A ton. That's about 15% uh, more than I find, which is quite a bit. It's going to be tough to beat this box, like I said, but we're up for the challenge. Let's see if my Texas box could be one of my hotter boxes and hold its own. Let me clear off the table, dump the copper, and get my box started. We're on roll number two of my box, and we got an early weed scent, 1948D. By early, I mean early on in the box. It's a 40s, not a pre-40s, but it gets us kicked off. Roll number 17 of my box, and uh, we only have one wheat scent, but got a nice sight for sore eyes. Wheat scent ender, roll 17. The wheat scent ender, 56 Denver. Roll 20 is going to yield our third wheat scent, but I already saw it because it was obverse facing. It's a 1957 out of Denver. Roll 22, wheat scent number four. 1946S. We'll take that. That is officially our oldest so far of this box. Hunting roll number 23, and I spy myself another wheat scent. Is this going to have any age to it? It looks pretty good on the reverse. And you know what? That's pretty old for as nice as this is. 1942, Denver. A little bit of luster still on there. It's not a bad weed scent. We'll take it all day. And it's my oldest and probably my nicest. Roll 24 of my Texas box. And you know what? We're not doing bad. We've got weed scent number six already. Not quite half it through the box. And uh, six of them. It's a 1944 Philadelphia. Not the best, but we'll take it. It's another one to add to the board. Roll number 25. Wheat scent, number seven, and it is a pre-40s. It's only a 1939, just made it under 1940, but I'll take it, oldest of the box. Roll 28, wheat scent, 
Number eight. 56D. Roll 36 is going to yield wheat scent number nine. The back looks pretty good from what I saw of it, which is why it's a 58D. Same roll. We're going to have wheat scent number 10, and this one's a 1945 out of Philly. Roll 45. 1944. Wheat scent number 11. Well, unfortunately, that's it for my box. It's not going to take the first round, most likely. We only got 11 wheat cents compared to the 17 in that box and only one pre-40s, and it had three pre-30s. But I'm happy with 11 wheat cents, including one pre-40s. That's not a bad box for me. We also got one Canadian, but those don't count for this hunt. 459s and 169s, not the DDO. On top of that, we got a decent 1970S. It's not in the best shape, but I don't find a lot of those in good shape, so I'm probably going to keep it. I also found one 1994. It's not the DDR, but it might upgrade to one of my album if I recall correctly. At the end of the day, the find of my box is going to be this 1939 Wheat Scent. That's the best one, only because it's the oldest, a little bit harder to find than the others. Now that we've done that, let me get them in the stat sheet. And let's make it official. Well, I almost didn't want to make it official after seeing the scorecard. Rhode Island, 42 and a half points. Texas, 22 points. It actually wasn't a bad box with 11 wheat cents and one being pre-40s. But when you compete against 17, including three under 1930, you're not going to win. Big Al, you got the first round, brother. I'm still going to fight like heck the best I can to try to take one or two of these rounds. But whenever I battle the Northeast, it seems like that's where the good pennies are. If I lived in the Northeast, you bet your bottom dollar I'd be hunting penny boxes every single day. Looks like Big Al is going to take it no problem and have a comfortable lead after the first box is down. That being said, I do want to congratulate Big Al on his awesome box. One round down, brother. Two to go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Penny Box Battle Series, Rhode Island versus Texas. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.